What's going on guys, Arrow here, and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, give you guys my thoughts on them, and then also give you guys some potential leaks as to what these games could be like. Now it has been a little bit since I've uploaded and I do apologize for that, really the only thing I can say is blame Xenoblade Chronicles 2 as that game has really just consumed me and I've been playing it so much that I've just forgotten about uploading and stuff and I really do want to get back into uploading for you guys, I am on spring break right now for a few days as well and this is definitely the time to be excited for Pokemon and a lot of other Nintendo games so I do want to get back into uploading for you guys so hopefully you can expect some more videos from me coming real soon. Now before we get started, I do want to let you guys know that I am giving away a Super Smash Bros Ultimate DLC Fighters Pass, and if you're interested in winning that, then all you gotta do is click the link in the description, I'll also make it the pinned comment in this video as well, and if you click on that, you'll have a chance to win that entire DLC Fighters Pass, you'll get access to all 5 DLC Fighters that are gonna be added sometime this year along with early next year, and so there's definitely gonna be some amazing fighters, and if you wanna have a chance to win that, then definitely be sure to enter. Now the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is just my general thoughts on Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. So right off the bat, I am going to say that I am very excited for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. I'm very much looking forward to playing them later this year, and they definitely seem like the amazing HD Pokemon console experience that I've always wanted. Now I do know that there are some people out there who aren't completely sold yet on Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield and have some mixed opinions on them, and after looking through everybody's reactions online, it seems like that the biggest complaints about these games are coming from the graphics department. And so from all of the negative reactions that I saw online about the reveal, it seemed like mostly people were just upset at how the game looks pretty similar to Pokemon Sun and Moon but just upgraded into HD. Now I will be honest, the graphics of Pokemon Sword and Shield did not amaze me to the potential that they could have been, but at the same time, they are a considerable improvement from what we had in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Like if you actually take screenshots from Sun and Moon and compare them to what we have in Gen 8 now, you can definitely see that there is a really big difference for how the colors look, like they look a little more vibrant, the shading on the models is ridiculous like with the Pikachu, you can also see that there's gradients now in the background and on the floor and stuff like that, so there's definitely some improvements, but I totally understand where people are coming from in the way that like the graphics definitely could have been considerably better. Now the people who were expecting like crazy realistic graphics in an open world Pokemon game were definitely pretty insane, but the other people who just wanted a new art style like to what we had in Breath of the Wild, I can understand that that could have definitely been possible to have inside of Generation 8, but they're still going for like the similar art style that they're using for Pokemon Sun and Moon. So the graphics are definitely not to the potential that they could have been, but they are acceptable for what we do have, and I think that almost everyone can agree with me that really no one plays Pokemon for the graphics anyway, we mainly play it for the new Pokemon, the characters, and the story, and so as long as the game has a lot of content, it's really going to be a ton of fun. But aside from graphics, I am very excited for this, the game definitely looks like it's going to be ridiculous, like seeing the whole entire Galar region being inspired by the UK, that looks amazing, the starter Pokemon look cool as well, like all of them have pretty unique designs, I really do like this starter set that we have right here, for me personally I'm going to be going with Score Bunny for the starter that I'm choosing, but definitely let me know down below which starter you guys are going to be choosing and which one is your favorite. But now that I've given you guys my general thoughts on Pokemon Sword and Shield, I do want to switch gears into talking about potential leaks for the games. So I've got two leaks here that both came out before Pokemon Sword and Shield were officially revealed and they both said that the new games were going to be called Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield and so that's why a lot of people are saying that some of the things that are said inside of these leaks could be true. Now I will say that predicting that the next Pokemon games are going to be called Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield is definitely not that challenging compared to like last year when somebody said that the next Pokemon games were going to be called Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee because nobody would have expected Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee so saying that is actually very convincing but here I think that a lot of people said Pokemon Sword and Shield because that was just a common thing to guess like a lot of people predicted that even in the video that I made about potential names I know there were quite a few people from Twitter who said that the games could have been called Sword and Shield so that wasn't really that hard to predict but I do want to just mention that real quick like a lot of people were expecting that because Game Freak is at a point now where there really aren't that many interesting things for them to like make two different versions for so it's kind of predictable and so quite a few people did get Sword and Shield correct. But at the same time it is fun to take a look at these potential leaks and give you guys my thoughts on them and what it would be like if they turned out to be true so yeah let's get started. Now this first potential leak that we have here was posted exactly a week before Pokemon Sword and Shield were officially revealed, and so they were revealed on Pokemon Day which was February 27th, and this was posted on February 20th. Now it seems that the person who posted this was also very confident in the information because they literally titled their entire post, screen cap this, legit. And then right after the person wrote, this is it, believe it now or later, and we've got the information down below. So the first thing that it says is the games are called Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, which turned out to be true obviously, and the next thing is that it says that the region is Great Britain, and we also know that that is true as well, it's based around the UK. 
Now here's where we have some potential interesting information. It says here that the legendary Pokemon are a metal snake and a wooden horse. Now from this, my prediction would be that the metal snake is probably for Pokemon Sword, and then the wooden horse is probably for Pokemon Shield, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. Like I don't really know how this would even work, like how a metal snake would work with Pokemon Sword, or how a wooden snake would go along with Pokemon Shield, or how they would even look like to match their games, but at the same time, we're just gonna have to wait and see, because the legendary Pokemon is one thing that they didn't get to show us with the initial reveal for the games. Like with even with Pokemon Sun and Moon, when we got to see the starters, they revealed Solgaleo and Lunala, and then with the X and Y Direct that got to reveal the starters, we also got to see the legendaries for X and Y, but here we just didn't get to see the legendaries, we only got the logos and the starters, so we're gonna have to wait and see exactly what the legendaries are like, but if the legendaries do turn out to be a metal snake and a wooden horse, then this leak's credibility goes up by a lot. The next thing that it says here is that apparently there's going to be something called Armored Evolutions, and it says here that we're gonna be getting an Armored Evolution for Charizard, an Armored Mewtwo, an Armored Flygon, and an Armored Zeraora. Now recently, it's very easy to tell that Game Freak is definitely implementing a lot of gimmicks and new mechanics with every single new generation. With Pokemon X and Y, we got to see Mega Evolutions. With Pokemon Sun and Moon, we got to see Z moves. So I really wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be some type of new mechanic or gimmick with the 8th generation as well. And apparently it looks like here is going to be something with Armored Evolutions. So Armored Evolutions is something that I can kind of see happening, especially with the games being called Sword and Shield, it kind of would make a ton of sense. And with the Pokemon that they do say, like with Mewtwo, we already do know that there's like an Armored Mewtwo kind of form that's already in the anime, so that would make a ton of sense. Armored Charizard, I mean Charizard's just a fan favorite Pokemon, that would make a ton of sense. Flygon, I don't really know, but I guess since a lot of people were sad that he didn't get a Mega Evolution, maybe that's why they're gonna do an Armored Flygon. Zeraora is also kind of iffy for me, like I don't know why they would do something with Zeraora, but the whole thing with Armored Evolutions, I could kind of see happening. I just don't know about these Pokemon. Like, if it's just going to be these Pokemon, I don't know, but I mean, maybe these are the only ones that the person knows about. And then the last thing that comes with this post is that the person says Meltan ties into Armored Evolution and the Legendary Lore. And this is also something that I can kind of see happening. Meltan is also like a metal Pokemon, and we really haven't gotten that much backstory and lore behind Meltan, so it would make a ton of sense to have Meltan connect with this entire generation, so I could actually see this happening very likely. Now I've got another leak here as well that also got Pokemon Sword and Shield correct, and so if we take a look right here, this was actually posted last year on April 1st, so this is something that once again was posted on April Fool's Day, but they did get a few things correct with the names and also the region, so it is worth taking this into consideration, and remember that the Pokemon Let's Go uh, Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee leak that came out on 4chan, that was also posted on April Fool's Day, so I don't know, I mean maybe this is just a coincidence and maybe some of this stuff could turn out to be true, but a lot of the stuff here does go into more detail. So the first thing is obviously it says the games are going to be called Sword and Shield. That was correct. England, London based region, we got that true as well. It says here no gyms and that you challenge the lords and get medals which are essentially badges. So this is kind of confusing because it did say inside of the game, like it did say even on the website, it says that gyms are going to be in the game. But from what people are speculating, it seems like that the gyms are actually like these stadiums that are sort of put throughout the region. So maybe the gyms could be a little bit different and maybe they do have like lords or something instead of gym leaders. But the fact that they did say that there are gyms in the game kind of makes this kind of seem a little bit less believable. But there are some other things here as well. It says that the Elite Four is equivalent to Noble Knights and that the champion is different for each version. There's a female champion for Sword and a male champion for Shield. That could also be something that I can see happening. The region is like Dragon Quest VIII, but it doesn't reward exploration besides the occasional unimpressive item ball find. So basically that's just confirming that it isn't like an open world game where you could roam around anywhere. It's just like a linear type of game where you explore and find your basic items like every other Pokemon game. There's also something here where it says some Pokemon get new forms called Sword and Shield forms from energy bestowed by the legends. Starters are the only Pokemon to get both a Sword and Shield form. So this is kind of going with like the Armored Evolution stuff that we got to see in the previous league. So maybe that could be something that's like the new gimmick or mechanic of these games. They also said here that they don't know anything about the starters, aiming for a November release but could be pushed back to spring 2019. So this is definitely very off because it makes it seem like that the games were supposed to be coming out last year. And obviously we know last year we got Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. So that's another thing that kind of makes this seem less believable. And then it says here, my source confirms things that are at an expected pace but everyone is very overworked and stressed. Game Freak was just not prepared for HD development as well as they should have been. Now this I don't believe that much either because I feel like that Game Freak is probably good with HD development as Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee were basically like the HD games to get their feet dirty and get them to understand what HD development is going to be like and I'm pretty sure that they use all that stuff that they learned from developing Let's Go into making Generation 8. 
And then finally, the last two things that it says here is, won't give me any information on Pokemon themselves besides the obvious based on the titles, evil team are a thieves guild, goal is money and power so less obnoxious than recent teams. So this I can kind of see happening, I mean Team Skull really wasn't that threatening in Pokemon Sun and Moon, so it wouldn't be surprising if the evil team in this game isn't that threatening either, I just feel like the Game Freak really isn't giving that sort of really scary type of evil team anymore. Unless they do that again, I would love to see like another Team Galactic or Team Plasma type of evil team, so hopefully they do do that. But, I mean, I don't know about this. I mean, I could kind of see it happening. We don't really know exactly what the evil team is even going to be like. So, we're just going to have to wait and find out. And so there you go guys, those are my general thoughts on Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, as well as possible information for what the games could be like. If you guys enjoyed this video, then please be sure to click that like button, and also comment down below and let me know what you guys think of this, what do you guys think of Pokemon Sword and Shield, what do you think about the potential leaks, definitely be sure to comment down below and let me know. If you're new to this channel, then please be sure to subscribe, I'm definitely going to have some more Pokemon content in the future, so please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Click on that bell to become part of the notification squad. Go follow me on Twitter at AtroArrow so you can be featured in videos, and also join my Discord server as well, I'll have that linked in the description, we've got a bunch of people in there who are always talking about Pokemon and Smash Bros and Nintendo, so definitely be sure to join that, and remember to enter my giveaway as well, I'm giving away an entire Super Smash Bros Fighters Pass for the DLC, so if you want to have a chance to get every single Smash Bros DLC character, then definitely be sure to click the link down below, I'll also make it the pinned comment of this video, but yeah, that's pretty much it, thank you so much for watching.